Hare Krishna, we continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter 5, Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness. We are on text 15. Nadate kasya chitpapam nacheva sukritam vibhuhu agya ne navritam jnanam tena muyanti jantavaha. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. Nor does the Supreme Lord assume anyone's sinful or pious activities. Embodied beings, however, are bewildered because of the ignorance which covers their real knowledge. The Sanskrit word vibhu means the Supreme Lord who is full of unlimited knowledge, riches, strength, fame, beauty, and renunciation. So the Supreme Lord, vibhuhu, Bhagwan means he has this unlimited, unlimited knowledge, unlimited wealth, unlimited strength, unlimited fame, unlimited beauty, and unlimited renunciation. He's always satisfied in himself, undisturbed by sinful or pious activities. He does not create a particular situation for any living entity, but the living entity, bewildered by ignorance, desires to be put into certain conditions of life and thereby his chain of action and reaction begins. So the Supreme Lord, he is Atmaram. He's fully satisfied. He's fully satisfied. His activities are not on the material platform. He, sinful or pious activities don't touch him. And it's not that he's creating a particular situation for us. No, but we, because of our desire, we are put into a certain situation. We are the ones who are creating these situations for ourselves. So uh, when we say the destiny is in our hands, this is what it is. Our destiny is in our hands. Why? Based on our desire. What is my desire? Based on my desire, I'm doing certain actions. Then, based on those actions, I'm getting some reactions. That's the chain. And why do we have this desire uh, to be in this material world? Because of our ignorance, bewildered by ignorance. Our true knowledge is covered. It's covered by this desire. A living entity is by nature, is by superior nature full of knowledge. So we, we, we are the soul. We are not supposed to be ignorant. Uh, we are full of knowledge. We are Satchit Ananda. Mm. Nevertheless, he's prone to be influenced by ignorance due to his limited power. So I'm Satchit Ananda. Then why do I get ignorance? Why? Because that's the living entity, we are minute. We are very minute. So we have this tendency to be covered by Maya. The Lord is omnipotent, but the living entity is not. So we, the soul, we are not uh, unlimitedly powerful. The Supreme Lord is unlimitedly powerful. He is the one who's omnipotent. Now, if I think I'm omnipotent, then I should be able to do anything I want. I should be able to create anything I want. I should be able to, you know, uh, act on that omnipotent platform, but I'm not. This is what we have to understand, that I am a living entity. I am the soul. Yes, I am the soul. But my power in comparison to the Supreme Lord's power is very limited. So although I have full knowledge, but because of my limited power, I get covered by uh, ignorance. The Lord is vibhu or omniscient, but the living entity is anu or atomic. So the Lord, he is omniscient. He is the vibhu, but we, the souls, we are anu or atomic because he is a living soul. He has the capacity to desire by his free will. Such desire is fulfilled only by the omnipotent Lord. So we, we are living, we are the soul, and each soul, we have this independent free will. Independent free will. It's not that when we get liberated, the soul has no free will. No, 
that is our we are conscious all the all along it's not then again, we, if we think, oh, after liberation, I am going to be unconscious and I have no free will. Then again, we are thinking, oh, because then we are thinking, oh, I'm the body and then the consciousness is coming in the body. No, that is the characteristic of the soul. The soul has the free will, not the body. The consciousness is the symptom of the soul, not the body. And who fulfills this uh, desire? of the free will. It is only the Supreme Lord. We, the souls, don't have the capacity. And so when the living entity is bewildered in his desires, the Lord allows him to fulfill those desires. But the Lord is never responsible for the actions and reactions of the particular situation, which may be desired. So we have desire. The Supreme Lord is fulfilling our desires. Uh, and because of these de desires, we are going through, we are doing certain actions, we are get, getting certain reactions, but we cannot blame the Supreme Lord for that. He's just facilitating the fulfillment of our desire. Why it's happening is because of my desire. So we are responsible. We are responsible of where we are and where we are going. And then why our desires are uh, become, what do you say? material, why our desires have become um, impure. Why? Because of our ignorance. We have forgotten that we are, the, so we are the spirit soul. We are not the body. The Lord is the constant companion of the living entity as Paramatma or the super soul. And therefore, he can understand the desires of the individual soul as one can smell the flavor of a flower by being near it. So when we are walking by a garden, even though we don't act actively put our nose inside the flower to smell the fragrance, when we are walking by the garden, there are the flowers in the bushes. But because we are near the flower, we can smell it. We can smell the flower. Similarly, the Paramatma is sitting next to us inside the heart. He is sitting next to us. And because he's sitting next to us, he understands what is our desire. He understands it. Desire is a subtle form of conditioning for the living entity. The Lord fulfills his desire as he deserves. Man proposes and God disposes. So how does the Lord fulfill our desire? Based on our so it's both desire and the karma. Do we have the qualification to uh, get to uh, to get this desire fulfilled? And if not right away, then there will be so many different situations, so many different lifetimes where we will be qualified to fulfill this desire. You know, like how we hear the story, Dhritarashtra, Hundred Sons. He needed to have so many lives so that he could get 100 sons, you know. So the individual is not therefore omnipotent in fulfilling his desires. The Lord, however, can fulfill all desires and the Lord being neutral to everyone does not interfere with the desires of the minute, independent living entities. So the Supreme Lord, he does not interfere what is our desire. He has given us full independence. What do we want to desire? We want to be in the spiritual world. We want to be in the material world. He leaves it to us. He does not influence our desire. He does not force us that, oh, you should desire this. No, but he helps us fulfill our desires. He's the one who is fulfilling our desires, the Supreme Lord. However, when one desires Krishna, the Lord takes special care and encourages one to desire in such a way that one can attain to him and be eternally happy. So, but when one desires to be with Krishna, when one desires Krishna, then Krishna makes the arrangements. He takes special care. He takes special care. He encourages that living entity. He encourages that so that he can actually attain Krishna. He can, no need to stay, continue to live in the material world. The Vedic hymns therefore declare, Esha, Yuhi Eva Sadhu Karma Karyati 
tam yam ebyo lokebya oni nishate eshas u eva sadhu karma karyati yam ado nishate the lord engages the living entity in pious activities so that he may be elevated the lord engages him in impious activities so that he may go to hell uh, shitaki upanishad 3.8 so it depends on our desire it's not that the lord is saying no you do bad things and then you go to hell and i'll punish you and he favors some people and he says oh you engage in pious activities you engage in devotional activities and you can get go back home back to god no it all depends on our desire agno agno jantur anisho yam atmanah sukha dukha yoho ishwara prerito gachet swargam vasva abraham evacha the living entity is completely dependent in his distress and happiness by the will of the supreme he can go to heaven or hell as a cloud is driven by the air so based on our desire krishna gives us the facilities that is the thing we cannot blame the supreme lord for our uh, our position no but uh, therefore the embodied soul by his immemorial desire to avoid krishna consciousness causes his own bewilderment so we are the embodied soul why are we call embodied soul because right now we are inside this material body that's why we are called embodied soul and what is our desire immemorial since eternal time eternal what our desire has been avoid krishna consciousness and because we have this desire to avoid krishna consciousness we are confused we are ignorant we do not have the perfect knowledge so we are the cause we cannot blame krishna for it we can't the desire is coming from us oh i don't want to be krishna conscious and so then krishna says okay you continue then you continue living in ignorance you continue being bewildered consequently although he is constitutionally eternal blissful and cognizant due to the littleness of his existence he forgets his constitutional position of service to the lord and is thus entrapped by nations so we are sachidananda we are eternal blissful and have full knowledge that is the quality of the soul so although we are we are sachidananda then why are we come under ignorance we are supposed to be having full knowledge right now we are in ignorance why because we have this desire to avoid krishna consciousness and because we are very very tiny we are very we we forget that our power is very limited we cannot compete with krishna we are trying to compete with krishna and that is our ignorance we are not able to understand that i am not the supreme lord he is the supreme lord yes i am the soul and he is also a soul but he is a super soul and so we are trying to have like a competition with him and we want to avoid we are, we want to avoid krishna consciousness that's what causes our ignorance under the spell of ignorance the living entity claims that the lord is responsible for his conditional existence and then we blame the lord oh it's because of lord that i'm here in the material world the vedanta sutras 2134 also confirms this vaishamya negranye na sapekshatva tatha hi darshyate the lord neither hates nor likes anyone though he appears to so even the vedanta sutra say it's not that the lord is partial that some people he's keeping in the spiritual world and some he's putting in the material world no it is totally has been because of our desire and and but he's kind even though we desire uh to to avoid krishna consciousness he keeps coming to the material world he keeps coming himself he comes sends his incarnations he comes he sends his devotees his representatives to keep reminding us he to keep reminding us hey come back home you know you're not the body what you're doing here come back home come back home and if 
by somehow or the other, we get this desire. Yes, I want to be situated in my original position. He helps. He makes all arrangements for us to be able to do so. So he's very, very kind. And in this age of Kali, he's made it easy for us. He says he came as Lord Chaitanya. He came as Lord Chaitanya and he said we can be revive our original Krishna consciousness simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra. So he's, he's very, very kind. And what we have to do, we simply have to take up this chanting with firm faith. Firm faith. It is, it is given to us by the Supreme Lord and he's our best well-wisher. So we should take up this chanting, take up the hearing with faith and continue and we will go back home back to Godhead. Is that okay? okay? If no comments or questions, we'll stop here. Thank you so much for listening in and joining in. Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Kaur Bhaktavinda ki jai, Hare Krishna.